I've been using an X-Press for my personal bow press for honestly longer than I can remember. They're not making them now, but there's still a lot of you that have them. And so the question is, how do we press the newer style bows in the X-Press? Because the older videos don't show the newer models. So really with any type of bow press, you should just understand the functionality of what the press should do. And what we're looking for is you really want to press that is just flexing the limb. And if you look at a bow limb, you'll see that this thing is, it's tucked in a, in a pocket, a limb pocket. And it's also bending, this arc right here is bending on what we refer to as the rocker of the limb pocket. And then that goes over to where the axle feeds through to the cam. So this limb is made to be bent. It's made to be bent just like a leaf spring. Okay, what's not meant to be flexed or bent hard is the riser itself. The riser is really constructed to support this system and the way that a compound bow functions. So what you need to know when it comes to a bow press basic is you want a bow press that's flexing the limb but not flexing the riser. So the X-Press actually is a great press and gives you a lot of ability to fully take a bow all the way apart and work on it. Honestly, easier than some of the crank style presses that you see today where it's more or less just squeezing the limbs from the ends and kind of flexing the limb, which is totally safe. Uh, however, when you back that press all the way out, to fully relax the limbs and everything. It's a little bit tougher to put that thing back in that press and fully flex it without it wanting to kind of pop out. So the X-Press really works awesome. So here's the basis that you need to know. These, these bars right here, now on a stock one, they're gonna be red, mine's painted green. But these bars right here are to secure the limb pocket and the riser down. They're meant to go right where there's a space between the rocker and the limb. And it's gonna support that. But then these end pieces, the wheels are gonna push on the limbs and they're gonna just flex the limbs only. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. This is a brand new Levitate and you can see right now, obviously it's a little bit too big, it's not gonna fit. So the first thing that I do is I'll loosen these lever arms that are in the back which then allow me to use this crank here and adjust these inner pieces in or out. So I'm gonna put that in there. You can see right here, it's a little bit too wide, okay? If I crank this, as I crank it, you can see right there would be perfect. Again, we've got this situated exactly where I'm talking about. An example of not being set properly as if I were to go too far like this. And now I'm actually pressing and holding the riser more so than the pivot point of the limb. We really want to be on this pivot point of the limb right there. And then over here, right there as well. Once you have your riser in that pivot position, then you'll lock down these levers that are in the back. Then we're gonna focus on adjusting these wheels so that they're gonna be able to flex the limb. Now, when it comes to the wheels, what you want is you want these wheels, there's two things you wanna do. One, you wanna adjust this width right here so that these wheels are exactly on each limb. The other thing you wanna to do too is you wanna make sure that you've used this lever here and adjusted this up or down so that when this comes close to contacting this, it's gonna to touch right at the axle. You don't wanna be flexing the limb down here. If it touches here, it's gonna flex this limb in, a, in an improper position. So you really wanna adjust the height so that it's gonna be coming and contacting the limb right by the axle. And you wanna adjust the width right here to the exact width of the limb. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring this side up here, get that one into position. I'll adjust these wheels. You can see I'm perfectly in position there. Make sure that 
These are snug too. Then once that's happened, you can crank this. You can see I'm contacting right here. I'm contacting right where the axle is. The wheel is pushing on this. It's laying on the flat part of that limb. And honestly, you know, here we are a few cranks and I've already totally relaxed that limb. So that's how you do it on a PSE. Now let's apply the same principles right now. Take this bow out. Okay, here's brand new Hoyt RX-7. So I'll put this one in here and you can see right now, obviously we're on the riser. We're not in the pivot position. So I'm gonna loosen these two levers and now I will adjust this out so that I'm able to push these down right at the pivot position of the limb. So this is just gonna be so easy on the system. It's literally flexing a limb that's made to be flexed. So now I'll bring this arm up. I'm gonna adjust these wheels again to the exact width of that Hoyt limb and I'm trying to come in contact right at the axle position. Now, one of the things that's really nice about this X-Press is they did have stickers here to tell you which holes you're in because obviously I'm in a nine here. I need to be in a nine there. That way this thing isn't kitty wampus and I can crank this thing a few times. Right now I'm making contact with the limb. You can see again, I'm making contact at the axle. It's supported at the pivot position. So two or three cranks, we've already relaxed this string. We can work on this bow. And you know, if we needed to let it out, we could. So there's the new Hoyt. Here's the new Matthews. Now with the new Matthews, or for the last several years, they do have the harmonic damper down here on the bottom of the riser. And so this can actually contact the pad here before the pocket itself is. So it would make it kind of uneven for the bottom here versus the top, right? So in that case, what you're gonna wanna do, go ahead and loosen those rear lever so that we can go ahead and adjust this thing to the width that we're going to need. And now what I'm going to do on these uh, X presses, they had pads and the pads were offset to where they fit in here. And that was actually to be used for risers with this type of application or for crossbows. So in this case, you can pull this pin, you can flip this block around, put the pin back in, and now you actually have the clearance that you need for your Matthews riser. So I've went ahead and secured this one. I've secured that one as well. They're both on the pivot points. Let's make sure we're fully tightened down. And same thing applies on the Matthews. Now they've, they've put a little block here on their axle which will allow certain types of presses, the easy presses to fit right in those slots, which is nice. But it also allows you to bring these up just like this with the X press. And we can come in contact with those as well. And those pads are actually reinforced. They've got the screws squeezing those together they're reinforced for strength with the Matthews, which is nice. So now that we've made contact, you can see really just a few turns once we've made contact and we've already got this string loose enough to work on. This has been an awesome press for me. And what I love about it is all it's doing is bending the thing that is meant to be bent, which is the limb. There's no pressure on the riser. It's only flexing the limb. Again, that's what a limb is made to do. So regardless of which new bow you have in your pre-existing X-Press, 
the same rules apply. Always have a bow that's being held into position at the pivot point or the rocker of the limb pad and the limb connection and make sure when you're pressing it, you're pressing it in the position of the axle where limbs are naturally reinforced right in here. If you follow those easy rules, regardless of if you have the PSE, Hoyt, Matthews, any other bow out there, that's the basic rule for pressing and you'll be able to do it safely and without any damage to your bow.